I need to come clean about something. I'm not a programmer. <laughs> it doesn't come naturally to me. I don't have the brains or the innate talent for it. Even just rehearsing this alone in my studio feels embarrassing, like I'm at my first AA meeting or something. Hi, my name is Maru, and I'm not a programmer. Or at least that's what I told myself for years, and what you probably tell yourself as well, right? See, I'm more of what you would call an artist. A visual thinker! Someone who uses Wix to make websites. Not just because they're awesome. Hashtag not sponsored. But because I just can't grasp CSS and have to rely on what you see is what you get. Which, for you web developers out there, sounds like something you can do in your sleep. So easy a caveman can do it. And yet somehow, I can't. That's how my mind operates. And if you're anything like me, I am so, so sorry. That must be awful, really. But moreover, probably means you've struggled for years on end, learning how to code in a variety of different languages, from a bunch of different sources, and just nothing ever seems to stick. Pulling your hair out, wondering why is everything so hard for you, when others make it look so damned easy. I can't take another night up in my room. That was my experience for literal decades. Fast forward to today, and not only do I have the skills of a junior programmer, who's gone on to make and sell their own apps, and help teach others starting out on their game dev journey, but also, I just love programming. It's fascinating, like nothing you will ever experience. Except maybe sex. But if you're a game dev, you don't have to worry about that. You get so much of it. <laughs> so yeah, I wasn't built to be a programmer. But that's okay, because it turns out you don't need any of that stuff in order to learn software engineering. You can still develop coding skills with the right mindset, the right instructions, and the right reframing techniques. For me, things started to click after I learned this one simple trick. And it didn't click right away. I had to revisit it over and over and over again, and really reflect on it before it sank in. But once it finally did, the entire world of programming opened up to me, and everything began to seem at least theoretically within my grasp, if I worked hard enough for it. I went from, I can't possibly do that, to, I just don't know how to do it, but I know someone can, and probably has done it before. I just need to figure out how. So what is this one trick? Fundamentally, it comes down to separating out logic from syntax. In other words, here's what you want to have happen, and here's how to actually make it happen. Logic is the what, syntax is the how. Let me explain. Code is language. Learning to code is like learning a new language. Languages have symbols and vocabulary and grammar rules that you have to learn in order to communicate effectively. I was just Sanskrit. I'm fluent in Google Translate. Would that we could just mind link and instantly be able to transfer information between two people or between man and machine. Maybe in another 20 years. I know Kung Fu. In the meantime, language is really the only tool we have to do that, inefficient as it might be. If I suddenly dropped you into a foreign land where no one spoke English and you didn't speak their native tongue, the chances that you'd survive, let alone thrive, are pretty slim. You'd have to resort to crude hand gestures and pointing at things until your brain learned to recognize patterns of speech and finally decode what these symbols mean and how to put them together. Something that could take you years of struggle and hardship. Study and practice years of it. It would be nice if someone could fast track you with a few key concepts and vocabulary at the start and hand you a dictionary that you can then use to look up words as they come up in conversation. At least then, you'd be able to sort through the syntax, the association between a given symbol and its corresponding meaning. And in programming, that's what tutorials and documentation aim to do. But that's not all there is to coding. Returning to our hypothetical scenario, dropping you into a foreign land doesn't suddenly mean you become an idiot overnight. Although, it might certainly come across that way to the people you encounter. You still have all your mental faculties and reasoning ability. You can still think and plan, and you have skills you've built up over the course of your lifetime. You just can't communicate any of that effectively to others, and it's that inability to communicate your intentions in a coherent way that makes you come off as stupid, when really you're anything but. You can't reach in and show them what's inside your head. You can't convey to them what you're thinking or what you want them to do. And if you've ever found yourself in that position before, of trying to talk to someone who can't understand a word of what you're saying, 
you'll know exactly what I mean when I say you start to develop an acute awareness of just how specific and simple you have to be. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? Words and phrases that came second nature to you in your native language, you now have to break down into smaller, more digestible concepts, almost like you're talking to a five-year-old who doesn't understand anything about anything, but whom you're trying to talk to like a fully matured adult who speaks with perfect fluency. That's the same for coding. You have this idea in your head of what you want to have happen. And in English, or even in the language of visual imagery, you can see and communicate it quite clearly using broad terms. Terms that you don't even realize are actually quite complex for someone who doesn't speak your lingo. It's why language courses start you off on words like cat and not philologist. Why do you always complicate things that are really quite simple? A picture's worth a thousand words, and a video is worth a million. What that actually means is there's a high density of information contained in that image. Even just my explaining that might sound patronizing, since you already have an intuitive sense of what that phrase means. But that's kind of the point I'm making, is that your understanding comes from experience. Whereas, to someone who's hearing it for the first time, it's anything but obvious. You get used to it. I, I don't even see the code. All I see is blonde, brunette, redhead. When you start learning how to code, it can often feel overwhelming, because you're the five-year-old in this case. You don't understand what even basic words mean, and have to build that up over time, which can be painful, boring, or even embarrassing, because chances are you watching this are an otherwise intelligent and capable adult who's frustrated that this isn't coming easy to you, like trying to teach my boomer parents how to text with both thumbs instead of one index finger. Okay, so what does this look like in practice? As an artist, you've probably done constructive drawing at some point, breaking down complex forms into simpler shapes, building armatures and guidelines, using abstraction to simplify the design. Or even if you're not an artist, I'm sure all of you watching at some point learned your ABCs and how to put together letters to form words and words to form sentences. If you're just learning how to read or draw, starting you on Shakespeare and the Mona Lisa would be an impossible ask but at least you know it's theoretically possible someday, firstly because you have a ready example in front of you of others who have done it, but also because a good teacher, or an observant student, can break down that complexity into bite-sized chunks that you are capable of replicating. Taking complicated things, abstracting them out, simplifying them down into their component parts, and then using those components to build on top of one another is how you learn how to read or write or draw or anything else. And that's essentially what you're doing with code as well. Let's say I want to create something simple like Flappy Bird. Essentially the hello world or ABCs of game dev. I can't just tell the computer, make me Flappy Bird. It doesn't understand what I'm asking. There's no make me Flappy Bird function on my machine. Maybe on yours, but certainly mine doesn't. It's too complex. It relies on too many pre-built assumptions of what things mean. Something an experienced human being might have, but a software tool does not. Even something like ChatGPT has to have a lot of training data and experience built up on the back end to be capable of breaking down my request into smaller and smaller tasks. But you can help it out by doing this yourself. So when I say, make me Flappy Bird, what do we actually mean? Here's where the explain it to me like I'm five part comes into play. In order to make Flappy Bird, I need a character. What do we mean by a character? I mean we have some object that exists in 2D space, it has a visual component to it, and... Hold up. What do you mean visual component? Let's say a sprite image that gets rendered to the screen. Oh, okay. So you want a game object with a sprite renderer component attached to it? Yes, that's what I want. Got it. I, the engine, know what that means. I have a pre-built solution for that. Please continue. Right, so it exists in 2D space. Oh, so we need a transform component that stores position, rotation, and scale information. Got that too. When I click the mouse button, I go up. Otherwise, I fall down. Let me stop you right there, Chief. What do you mean by go up and fall down? I mean I want you to increase its velocity along the y-axis, or otherwise decrease its velocity along the y-axis. Oh, so you want physics. Well, I, the engine, have a built-in physics system. 
So you'll want a rigid body 2D component so that gravity affects your object. And then how do I access it on the back end through code? Just grab a reference to it. And then we've got this fancy input system that comes with functions such as on mouse button down, where you can increase or decrease the velocity as you like. And then continuing on in this way for everything you want to do. Depending on what language you're working in, the syntax will be different, but the logic will remain the same. The logic is the design part of game design, whereas syntax is the execution of that design. And depending on what engine you're using, you'll have different pre-built solutions to certain common problems already in place. For instance, c -sharp and JavaScript are very similar languages in terms of their syntax, but if you're working in web development, you might have to create your own physics system from scratch versus something like Unity or Unreal Engine that have built-in physics systems and both come standard. You can just use them right out of the box. If you're just starting to learn how to program, I'd highly recommend getting into the habit of planning out your project on paper before even touching code. That way, you can focus on the logic portion in isolation and make sure that works as you intend without the added pressure of not knowing how to execute on that vision. Writing out the logic in what's known as pseudocode, which is where you use plain English in what sounds sort of code-like, breaking things down into smaller and smaller chunks, until eventually you get to a single line that either relates to some feature in your engine, or which you can easily translate into actual code using the syntax of your particular coding language. Essentially, translating English into some foreign language that doesn't obey the same rules regarding grammar and sentence structure. Again, you have things like tutorials and documentation that will serve as your dictionary to look up exactly how to do the translation if it's still unfamiliar to you. And if you can't find anything along those lines, if the word or phrase you're trying to parse doesn't appear in the dictionary, it probably means you haven't broken it down far enough. You haven't reduced the complexity enough to something that either exists already in the engine or which relates to some tool or piece of code someone has written somewhere. In that case, the problem is with your logic and you need to go back and simplify your ask even further. My logic is undeniable. Again, tell it to me like I'm five. That might sound frustrating or condescending, but that's essentially what you have to do. There's no way around it. The computer is your obedient little child and will do everything you tell it to do without fail, without question, but only if you explain it in a way that it can actually understand. There are no bad students, only bad teachers. It's never the computer's fault. It's always your fault for not explaining it properly. It's me. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. That might sound overly harsh, placing a high expectation on you, especially when you're just starting out, but it's the same as trying to blame your brushes for not drawing what you want them to instead of the hand that guides them and developing proper muscle memory. If your code isn't working, usually that means there's something about the process that you don't understand. So really take the time to break things down and develop your own understanding in parallel. If you do that, I promise you, no matter what you think of your natural ability or lack thereof, no matter what you've tried in the past or how many times you've failed, if you just remember this one lesson, you will be able to learn programming. Thanks, Dan. All right, guys, I want to keep this one short and simple. I hope this was helpful to you, or at least encouraging, and knowing that even some dumbass like me with art brain can still go on to become a successful programmer, and that it puts learning how to code within the realm of possibility for you as well. That said, I know coding and game design can still be pretty tough, which is why I set up a Discord server where you can go and ask questions and learn from fellow developers. I also have tiers set up on Patreon where you can ask questions and get personalized one-on-one -on -one assistance and feedback if you're really struggling, or if you'd like to help support the channel. Of course, the most important thing you can do is like and share the video with others to let the algorithm know it should boost this content. You've been on YouTube before, you know what to do and where to find it, and if you'd like to know more about how to become a successful game dev, check out the links appearing on your screen now. Till next time, I'm Marushia Dark, this is Circuit Studios, Take care. Gonna need some serious art therapy after this one.